Welcome back to All Things Money. I'm David Blaine. And during this segment, we're going to take a look at some of the questions that we've received from listeners and viewers. The number one, by far the number one question we're getting from uh, viewers and listeners, as well as our own clients, is about taxes. Everybody is concerned about taxes. Um, are they going up? Are they going down? Are the tax cuts expiring? Are they staying? Is the estate tax coming? Is the estate tax going? And of course, in typical fashion, uh, Congress punted on the issue and decided not to address it until after the election. Uh, I think a lot of people, there's a lot of misinformation floating around. And so what we want to do in this segment is answer some of these questions by once again reviewing some of the major tax issues that are on the table, number one. And number two, once again, review sort of who pays taxes in America uh, and who doesn't. Um, you get a lot of, uh, you know, the this class sort of warfare against the, quote, wealthy. Um, and so it's important to strip away a lot of this rhetoric and actually look at at the facts and, and who is, is doing what. Um, but before we do, I thought, um, for those of you old enough to remember the Beatles, um, they had this great song about the, uh, the tax man. And uh, I was just looking at some of the lyrics for it recently. It's kind of fascinating. Some of the lyrics go like this. There's one for you, 19 for me, because I'm the tax man. Should 5% appear to be too small, be thankful I don't take it all. If you drive a car, I'll tax the street. If you drive to city, I'll tax your seat. If you get too cold, I'll tax the heat. If you take a walk, I'll tax your feet. <laughs> don't ask me what I want it for if you don't want to pay some more. And my advice to those who died, declare the pennies on your eyes. Because I'm the tax man. Yeah, I'm the tax man. Anyway, even the Beatles way back in the uh, 60s, I guess, when they wrote this song, uh, the tax man was always a, a specter of of cloud over people's lives and, and nothing has changed since then. Um, although I would say that the specter of taxes is even greater today. Um, the tax code is currently uh, somewhere around maybe 70,000 pages. If we throw in uh, Obamacare on top of that, which adds on many more um, tax provisions that, um, you know, the, the, the pages just multiply on a daily basis. Uh, so let's review um, some of the tax changes that are going to occur January 1, 2011, if after the election Congress does not address this. So first of all, all the income tax brackets are going to go up. Uh, if Just to remind you, the first tax bracket we currently have starts at 10%, then 25, 28, 33, and 35. All of these are scheduled to rise the 10% going to 15%. As I mentioned on a previous show, it's a 50% rise in the lowest income tax bracket. And the 35% will go to 39.6%. Uh, so all the tax bracket will rise. Uh, itemized deductions and personal exemptions uh, will still phase out, which has the same mathematical effect as, a, as higher marginal tax rates. Uh, there'll be higher taxes on marriage and the family. The so-called marriage penalty will return. Uh, the child tax credit will be cut in half from $1,000 to $500. Um, the standard deduction will no longer be doubled for married couples relative to the single level. Of course, the uh, death tax is going to come back in 2011 with a uh, top rate of 55% of those estates over $1 million. Um, and a, a person leaving behind, you know, a paid off home, uh, you know, a re retirement account and a, and a life insurance policy that's not been properly structured is easily going to exceed a $1 million and you're going to see taxes on that, that type of estate. Capital gains tax is going to increase from 15 to 20 percent. The dividends tax is going to rise from 15 percent to uh, a maximum of 39.6% in 2011. A couple of the highlights of Obamacare, uh, we've got the uh, what we call the medicine cabinet tax, um, no longer be able to use um, HSAs and FSAs for over-the-counter medicines. And I know that's kind of a petty thing, 
But once again, it's a petty thing. And, you know, just eliminating these deductions um, seems ridiculous. Um, the, uh, also, as I mentioned previous, on a previous show, the penalty for early withdrawal on the HSA will rise, um, making it less favorable as compared to the IRA. The AMT, which is called the Alternative Minimum Tax, if you're not familiar with this, you might be next year because it's estimated that uh, over 28 million American families will be subject to this as opposed to approximately 4 million today. What the AMT is is essentially a parallel tax structure that sh- were you doing your uh, tax return on paper, you would actually do your tax return the regular way and you would do it under the alternative minimum tax rules. There are two separate sets of rules for how you compute your tax. You look at the bottom line for each and if community com- Computing your taxes under AMT is higher than computing it the regular way. Well, guess what? You get to pay the higher amount. Of course, if you use tax software, most software automatically is computing these. But conceptually, there are two sets of tax codes with different ways of treating uh, mostly uh, deductions. And as Congress has the ability to adjust the things in the AMT, it ensnares more people. And so some of the things... In 2011, is, uh, it's estimated that it will now ensnare, ensnare approximately 28 million people. Uh, another thing, charitable contributions from IRAs will no longer be allowed uh, starting in 2011. So those are some of the uh, tax changes, uh, mostly tax increases, that will come about in 2011 if our Congress does not act. Um, as I mentioned, they postponed this until after the election, so keep that in mind when you're uh, casting your votes. Um, I want to spend about the last minute here on the sort of tagline that you hear a lot, that the wealthy don't pay their fair share. And to steal a quote from uh, John Adams when talking about the Boston Massacre, he said that facts are stubborn things. And when you actually look at the data, the wealthy uh, bear a, a disproportionate burden of all the taxes If you look at um, the top 1% uh, paid over 28% of all federal taxes. In fact, if you look at um, when factoring in things like the earned income credit, uh, households earning less than $34,000 paid an overall tax rate um, of uh, slightly negative. um, They actually had a negative tax rate. It was minus 0.4% in 2007. Well, that's all the time we have for today. For All Things Money, I'm David Blaine. The proceeding was a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media.